Good evening, everybody. Firstly, thank you, BLL and BSE, for having me here. But I think before I start, I must say that I'm truly humbled when I look at all these stories and I look at each one of you here sitting, and I'm sure there are so many stories to tell and such a wonderful journey that each one of you would have traveled to be where you are today. So Shweta, in her, in her opening remarks, talked about that your business may not have been unique, but each one of you are. And so today, when I talk about a performing culture, let me start, and I'm supposed to give you three things, right? So when I looked at the subject, the subject actually is a very vast subject. It cannot be done in 10 minutes. But I thought, let me share with you some of my experiences. But before I go there, and before we talk about performing culture, I think it's very important that each one of you as entrepreneurs and captains of your own company, look at the word culture. And when you look at the word culture, there's one step that you need to take before that. And that is, what is the purpose? Many organizations know what they do. Many organizations know how. But it's very important to answer the question, why? What is the purpose and why are you doing what you are doing? And why do you do this every day? And we talked about a lot of the examples, some of the people who came up on stage and talked about 30 years and 40 years down the road. So what's that purpose? It is very important for you to look at that. We do a great job in terms of understanding outside in, that is listening to our customers and seeing what happens from outside and bringing it into our organization to change. But when you look at inside out, then that changes and creates its own set of dynamics. A lot of people, a lot of employees, some of them who have been with you through the 30 year and 25 year journey, and some who are new. So that creates its own challenge. So creating a performing organization isn't about just the money itself that you pay them. It's about the belief that each one of these people in your organization are going to contribute. So when I looked at that, I realized that there are three things, but I'm going to expand on this in the next two slides. So the three things that I thought were very important. First is culture. And that culture is, is basically having a purposeful and enduring culture. A culture that is not just there by virtue of what is in your mind, but something that every employee knows what it means in every action that they do. And so therefore your culture that you have brought into your organization has to be articulated. And that too, not one day or once in a year or once in six months, but every day. The second most important thing is change. Your business is changing, your environment is changing. And so in your organization, it's very important for you to create elements of meeting that change proactively. So looking at how is it that we can have meaningful change elements in your organization that can be over a 12 to 18 month period. And the third piece is that all vision without action has no meaning. And so therefore it is very important to understand how are those initiatives and that change brought into action. So if you ask me, if you want to build a performing culture, I will talk about, you have a lot of things, people talk about performance appraisals, your job descriptions and your evaluations and increments, yes. But does that build a performing culture? No, it is the elements to it. It is the means to it, but what really builds are these three things. So therefore, performing culture is not something that you do once in a while. It is something that you do every day. So what could be the various elements um, that govern this? The first is to look at the behaviors that drive your business and your performance. What are those behaviors and do everybody in your organization understand them clearly? And that is when you start making that a practice. Look at the mindsets. I think we talked about a little bit in these presentations before, the mindset of people. It is very important, we talked about emotions when we were talking about healthcare. And it is so important to understand that everybody in the organization that you have are built up of emotions, experiences. And so employee experience and the mindset that drives them needs to be framed and reframed as you as you're growing into an organization year on year. Because your business is growing and getting reframed. And so therefore, the mindset, the behaviors at the workplace need to be reinforced and also reframed. There has to be business initiatives. And these business initiatives need to be attached to role models. 
Now many times, if you've noticed, when somebody gets promoted, okay, so you promote somebody from assistant manager to a manager, how he does his job primarily is look at the previous manager and see what the previous manager has done and start emulating and doing the job. But it's very important for organizations when you're building a performing culture to start creating those guys in your organization, ladies or gents, who are role models. And then the drivers of your business are attached to those role models. And when those role models are seen and emulated, etc., you start building a, a culture that starts performing. You move away from mediocrity. You move away from having your, pr your promotion a 50-50 chance. You start building predictability in the success of that promotion. You need to build a coherent work experience. Now, when I talk about work experience, we look at, let me give a simple example of onboarding. All of you do onboarding of your employees when they join. We do, in, we do an induction. Many a times, most of the times rather, that is taken very lightly. But that is the most fundamental area where you cement a person to your organization. And that done with a purpose and a clear-cut message is very critical. So it is about looking at employee-centric ways, looking at how people can overcome their personal barriers to start meeting, performing you know, objectives of your organization. Now, what are the various attributes to do that? I think it's very important for us to look at, and we talked about trust. We talked about trust as a concept a little earlier in the day today, and that is so fundamental. Being honest and trust in your organization helps people align to what you want them to do. So doing a performance appraisal is all part two. Part one is ensuring that are you able to have built focus towards performance? Are you creating people who have accountability and ownership just like you? Because many a times we would look at ourselves and say that we are the entrepreneurs. I don't think any of these guys who are earning a salary can think and do like us. But I think that is the one thing that you got to change. Because you have to start having belief that if you want to truly build a performing organization, that they also start thinking and start having the founder's mentality created in them. And each one of you as the captains will have to start creating that in your organization. That is why I started by saying, it is not something that you do once in a while. It is something that you have to do every day. You have to look at an organization that's collaborative and you purposely create teams that start performing and building your organization as you grow forward. Yes, I do understand as you grow large, the ability to be agile and adaptive is always going to be a challenge. But aren't those the cornerstones of what you want to do? And so therefore, if you want to build a performing organization, the innovativeness and the agility that you have with your employees and the certain set of people that are driving 80% of your business is very critical. And finally, it is the orientation to winning. It is very important to have people understand that, yes, we all are here to win. Small wins, big wins, all need to be celebrated. So when you start putting these attributes together, you start creating a performing organization. And I'm going to leave you this. I told you to be started with three points. I'm going to leave you with this slide, which talks about seven different things that I felt that you could do while you're on this journey to building a performing organization. So a performing organization is not about a performance appraisal. It's not about a very nicely drawn up KPI or KRO. It's not about somebody coming in and saying, ye kaam hai, aap kar kal se. It's about us creating a work environment that is conducive to consistently every day bring out the best in people. And the moment you start doing that, you'll automatically realize that you're moving to being a great organization to work for, and you're being an organization that is performing at its performance peak. People are the heart of any company and are a key resource in enabling organizations to successfully overcome business environment challenges. Compensation alone is not enough to energize the highly skilled, motivated, young and experienced workforce of your business. The success of any business depends on the engagement and involvement of its employees at work. Share Your HR, a global HR consulting firm, are innovators in people solutions focused on creating employee experience that has helped businesses achieve results and optimize manpower with capability across India, the Middle East, APAC, Europe, North America, and Central America. We take pride in our expertise and our approach based on our values of simplicity, commitment, integrity, innovation, and respect. Share your HR's key services, HR advisory services, employee value experience proposition, HR shared services, process engineering, 
Consulting CHRO, Transforming Business Leveraging People Practices, HR Health Assessment Governance, Reward and Benefit Management, Talent Review, HR Automation, DIY HR, HR Hovercraft, M&A Due Diligence, Employee Wellness. Share your HR's uniquely designed HR process engineering solutions, HR health assessments, and employee wellness programs build efficient and consistent HR delivery, automate processes, address key workplace issues to transform companies, and deliver to tangible outcomes around productivity, manpower optimization, retention management, improved success predictability, leadership assessment, and higher employee engagement. Share your HR expertise in managing complete employee lifestyle activities continues to help companies to optimize manpower, build employee value, create employee experience, and enables HR teams to focus on other key people aspects. HR Hovercraft, a purpose design software, helps bring AI and automation to key people practices. We believe that HR delivery and HR Hovercraft can be key elements in attracting and retaining employees for any any company. Our global payroll and governance capability help companies have a single partner to being a compliant corporate citizen. Businesses using Share Your HR services experience 22% improvement in HR delivery, 15% reduction in early life absenteeism, 12% improvement in ESAT scores, and 11% higher productivity. What is it that your business is doing to ensure that your people are the drivers of growth and efficiency? Our team of experts are passionate to helping your company create an immensely powerful employee value proposition. Explore Share Your HR today.